So where does all this research leave us? Is the National Guard a constitutional entity? What about the naval militia? Is the division of militias into organized and unorganized legitimate? Yes, because Congress has the power to, under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 16, to provide for the organizing, arming, and disciplining of the militia. Does the Congress have the authority to call up a state's militia to enforce federal law? Yes, under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 15. This still leaves us with a couple of sticky situations, though. First, what happens if a state finds that a federal law was not made pursuant to the Constitution and refuses to execute said law within their borders? Is it possible for the president to call on that state's militia to enforce the law? This is where we need to look very closely at a particular situation. For a law of the United States to be part of the supreme law of the land, it must be pursuant to the Constitution according to the Supremacy Clause, Article 6, Clause 2. This Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby, anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. Now, if Congress or the President disagree with the state about the constitutionality of the law, we are supposed to have a neutral arbiter of the situation, the federal judiciary. The judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity arising under this Constitution, the laws of the United States, and treaties made or which shall be made under the, their authority, to controversies to which the United States shall be a party. So unfortunately, the judicial branch of the federal government long ago substituted their objectivity and fidelity to the Constitution in favor of their own opinions. While I've given many examples of the dangers of such a situation, the dispute between a state and the federal government over the constitutionality of a law is possibly the most dangerous. How far would a state go, or the federal government go, to pursue their positions? Would a, a state attempt to secede from the Union? Would the federal government use military force to exercise their will? Would this lead to another civil war? The other sticky situation comes from the involuntary nature of the federal government's definition of the militia. I would need to do more research, but I believe that being considered a part of the militia is the legal justification for the Selective Service Registration and the conscriptions of the past. As I've already pointed out, these deprivations of liberty without due process are a violation of the Fifth Amendment. Some may blame this on the twisted character of the constitutionally created government that now resides in Washington, D.C., but we find this forced enlistment going all the way back to 1792, which brings another thought to mind. See, the Senate in 1792 had such members as Roger Sherman, Richard Henry Lee, and James Monroe, while the House of Representatives had Elias Bodineau and, and James Madison. And let us not forget, George Washington was the president. These men had fought for independence. They had seen the destructive elements of military rule and forced service by the British. So why would they establish a law that could be used to conscript men into military service? I cannot read their minds, but I have a possible answer. We often talk about our right to be free, but we're rarely concerned with the duties that freedom places on us. We have the right to vote, but does that not include the duty to vote for people of character who will fulfill their oaths to support the Constitution? We also talk about our right to a trial by jury, but doesn't that imply a duty not only to serve on a jury, but to seek justice in the case that we hear? See, we call ourselves the land of the free, but does that not include the duty to fight to defend that freedom? When someone wants to be naturalized as a citizen of the United States, they take an oath that includes that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by law. Could it be that membership in the militia is a duty all Americans should willingly fulfill? In several countries around the world, military service is compulsory. Under American law, it's only necessary to be part of the militia, to be willing, if necessary, to fight for your state and your nation. If the men who brought us the Fifth Amendment did not think it too much to ask of the citizens of the United States and of the several states that they be numbered for their defense, can we refuse to answer the call when the need arises?